here at La Artistino back again with another video. This time we're going to do a tutorial. Now not so long ago I posted up this finished picture from Lost Ocean on, on my La Artistino blog site and what it is actually is one of Joanna's skulls and instead of leaving the background white I filled it in with this wood panelling sort of design and I posted up, I did a little sort of written tutorial on La Artistino uh, but, um, and I suggested that if people want more details I would um, go ahead and do a video of how I went about this and the response was very positive. So here is the video now of how to do the wood panelling effect that I used for this skull picture. To do this I used first off a set of pastels. These are new pastels I've just got. They're um, from South Korea. They're quite nice. Mangio pastels. I'll just open the box. Not very expensive, but in fact pretty cheap for pastels for 64. There you go. And I've used them. I quite like them. They've got lots more colours than I had before and a lot brighter colours, so I'll be using these a lot. And I used three pencils. The pencils I used for this was a very dark brown of the Polychromis. This one is the Walnut Brown and Dark Grey which is the Cold Grey number 6 and swapping pencil types I've used my white Prismacolor and the reason I use my white Prismacolor is that though I love Polychromis they're translucent which means they show what's underneath it. The Prismacolors tend to be opaque which means they cover up what's underneath it and that's the sort of effect I wanted to do. On top of that I also used makeup pads to smooth the pastels out with and some erasers, my electric eraser and a couple of erasers just to clean up the edges that I didn't want. Now I won't do it in a colouring book, I'll just use a spare piece of paper. Almost forgot to mention you also will need a ruler and a grey lead pencil. Okay to start with I'm just gonna draw a little something in the centre to represent the skull. You might not use the skull picture for this you might just pick something else that you like and want some wood panelling around it. Doesn't matter what book you're using, or just use it for your own private artwork. That's fine. There we go. A smiley skull and cross. How's that? Right, first of all, with your ruler, you want to divide the page. Now, I've got five layers of wood panelling in mine, uh, five rows of wood panelling, but for this one, I think we will just go with three because it's just a little demo. So you want them the same distance apart, so I'll just do six, six, that blue, right. And the same on the other side. I think in the book, I think they were six centimetres apart. Right, once you've got that in place, just lightly draw where your wood is. Stop on either side of your skull. Oh, that one's a bit big. Okay, we'll, we'll make that one a bit smaller. There, that's better. That, that's plenty, we'll do that. Okay. Right, oh, that's a bit too small, isn't it? Hang on, let's do that again. Ha, see? It's alright to make mistakes as long as you've got a rubber to rub things out with. Six, six. Oh, I had it right the first time around. How's that? There we go. Okay. Now, just decide where you want your, the uncoloured area to be outside the wood panelling, just loosely. Now, because it's wood and I wanted to give the impression of, you know, something smashing through the wood and wanted broken wood panelling, I made it very jagged edges. There you go. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so you've got that, um, the actual shape of your wood panelling now. 
Now the last thing you want to do with your grey lead pencil, and this is where you need to go and Google some pictures of, of timber or just look around the house at you know examples of timber furniture and have a look at what kind of pattern you get in the um, wood grain. Now to show you the picture again, I'll show you what I mean. Right, as you can see here, I've got the actual knots or eyes. They look like little eyes actually, in little concentric ovalish shaped circles. And I've got another one there. You don't want too many. You'd certainly know more than say one or the maximum of two in any piece of wood. And several pieces of wood without any at all. Make them a feature. And some lines, just a, a, a fair amount of lines all going in the same direction. And here's where you need your pictures uh, of timber to just reference and you can get an idea of how many lines you want and what direction they're going in. But you want them all fairly parallel and with a bit of a wave to them. So, oh, and the other thing you want is the, the joins here. So you want to um, break up your wood panels into some pieces. There, I'll put a join there. And I'll put another join about uh, there. Okay, well, let's have another one there. Okay. That's right, again, you don't want any more than one per line, and some lines you don't want any at all on. Right, now with the joins, you need the bolts, which are holding the, the timber together. So, two little circles like that. Again, you just reference pictures to see where bolts would be um, on this one here and here and then on the other side of the join here or with not so much the join where the two pieces of timber meet and here and here but we can't go down here or here because this piece of timber doesn't exist it's been blasted off now we've got that we're going to put in the a sort of a loose idea of where the grain is. I start by just checking out where I'm going to do the eye. So I'll do an eye around about here, and maybe one here. Okay, and maybe uh, you don't want things to look too even. Might do one at the end of this panel here. Okay, and maybe one just sort of like over at the bottom of this panel. Okay. Now next, you want the wavy lines. Just you just want a loose guide for what you're going to do later. Like this. Weavy lines. Right. And that. Not too wavy, just some little undulation, some straight, and just a little bit of undulation. So it looks like natural wood grain. And that'll be a guide when we're filling it in later. Okay, right. Now we've got the picture all, the background all drawn out ready and we're ready to begin with the pastels. Next you've got to select your pastel colours. Now for this particular picture I've decided I will go firstly with a light brown. This is the one I used. Sort of like a, a medium light tan. And I will also be using a darker brown. Oh well, let's go with that one, hey? See how we go. Right, once you've selected your two pastel colours, and these are the two I've picked, take your lightest one, grab your little pad, your little um, makeup removal pad, bunch it up so you've got a nice little tip on it like that, and then just rub it to pick up your pastel. And when you're rubbing, it's an idea just to rub over the picture because with some pastels, some of the dust, pastel dust, will also fall off it onto the page. It's a bit hard to see, but there it is. Now, you've got that. You want to sweep the pastels across the page in long lines. It doesn't really matter if you go over the uh, edges a little bit. You can clean that up later. What you want is nice long sweepy lines and it helps if you just follow the course that you took with your pencils when you were drawing in the wood grain. So 
I give it an, a fairly good coat, but leave a little texture so that you can see the direction of the wood grain. When you're happy with your first layer, take your pad and just to conserve the use of your pads, or you can grab a new one if you want, fold it up again and get your darker colour this time. I've gone for a very dark brown. And using the tip again, just, and this time I'm not going to pick it up over the picture because I don't want the dust on the picture this time and I'll show you why. So just over off camera here, I'm just going to again pick up whoops, some more dust and making sure it's a nice fine point. I'm going to look at where I actually put the marks of the timber with my grey lead pencil and I'm just going to follow along those marks and dust in lines of just a few. I don't want to cover the original um, colour. I just want to accent it with some darker tones. So you've got two tones in here. So this won't take as long because you're just accenting it. And sort of more or less, and you don't have to be precise with this. Thing about wood grain is it's quite forgiving. You can sort of do anything and somewhere in the world there will be wood that matches that, what you've done. I think the main thing is just to give it, make sure it's nicely covered without any big white spots or blank areas and that everything sort of has a wobbly stripey feel to it. <laughs> there we go, I think that's good enough. Okay, now, just making sure the edges are all nicely covered. There, okay, now I've got this rather blotchy, woody grain look. Looks a total mess now, but believe me, the magic is about to start. First of all, you want to get rid of all the excess um, pastel that you've got in the picture, so just Go around with a rubber and knock out the pastel that you don't want. This paper isn't quite as good as the paper in the Joanna Basford's colouring book, so it's not going to give me exactly the same result that I got with those, but it'll give me near enough so I can show you what to do. Remember, if you're using different colouring books, test your techniques first at the back out on a page that you don't want and also there we go get in there also done practice this technique on another piece of paper first before you commit it to your coloring book and that way any mistakes or any sort of like learning curves that you have to go through first before you actually do a completed work you've, you've been through on a scrap piece of paper it doesn't matter if you make mistakes Okay, that's good enough for me. I'm going to turn the video off now and flick off the rubber shavings and I'm also going to go outside and spray the work with fixative, okay? Very important, this is a clear permanent protection that will um, stop most of the, pe the pastels from rubbing off onto your hand or anywhere else or onto the next page. This one is the fixative workable mat that uh, is made by Micador. It's an Australian product, but if you go to your craft store, you will also find uh, fix matte fixatives that um, will suit. Make sure that it's workable, so that you can put stuff over the top, and that it's matte, which means it's not shiny. 
Okay, the fixative is on and dried and we're ready to continue. Next, I'll show you how to do the little bolts that you can see in the wood panelling. Okay, right, now you've left the marks here where your bolts are approximately going to be. So what you want to do now is sketch them in. Now you want to make them pretty round and of the same size. So there's one and about the same distance apart. And there's two. Alright, that looks about it. Okay, now we need to take out the grey lid and put in a little half circle of shading, just like that. It's darker at the bottom and then getting lighter to the top, leaving a little halo at the bottom and this will give your bolt dimension so that it looks like it's sticking out from the wood. I also want to make it a little bit dark around it where it's sitting embedded in the wood so it looks like it's, it's sunk into the wood a little bit so give it a nice dark halo. Now this is where you need your white Prismacolor and as I said before I'm using a Prismacolor for this one because it's an opaque and it'll show up better on on the brown because what we want to do is, is knock back the brown and make it white, shiny white. And as you can see as I'm adding that, it doesn't make it all together white but it's no longer brown. Let's see the difference between this one and this one. Prismacolors are good for this. The Caran Diaz Luminance White is another excellent white pencil for this. But your Polychromus, because it is a translucent pencil, won't have this effect. You probably get a little bit of a whitey look to it, but not as good as this. Now, I'm going to fast forward now and do the rest while you're watching. that's the bolts done now I'm going to show you how to make it look like the bolts are really in some old timber from the side of a boat now because the bolts have embedded in the timber and the timbers weathered it's going to create little cracks along it so what I'm doing here is making it wider at the base and then tapering out a little bit to make these cracks sort of weathered away now you want them uneven I'll show you in my finished picture over here exactly what I'm aiming for. See how I've got these weathered cracks coming out from the bolts to make it look like it's embedded in the wood and it's it's aged with the wood. Mm -hmm. I'll do the same with this one. Okay. Right. Now the other thing you want to look at is this join or border here between the two panels. Now because it's if it was new timber it would be almost dead straight but this is old timber so it's got a little bit shrunk and a little bit weathered. So you're basically you're following down the line but make it a little bit kind of jagged. And then go on the other side 
make it a little bit jagged as well. Not not too far apart, just, I'll just colour it in a little bit. So you've got the two joints there. Right. Now you can even extend these cracks to the edge and then make them a little bit wider there and then taper into the middle and then wide again here where the bolt is. Don't do all of them, just one or two. Perfect. Too many, it's overkill. This is where the, the practice comes in and also looking at timber that you've got around the house or piece or timber on, um, on the internet or pictures of timber to get an idea of what this, this look actually looks like and what, what the grain um, appears so you can copy it. Now I'm going to, so you can see I'm also going to put in the edges of the timber, just don't make it too straight, it's hard, slightly wobbly hand drawn look here for where the two pieces of timber meet and here too. Now, even though you can't see the bolts on the other side, they're too far back here, um, there's still going to be the same effect of the timber cracking. So, just again, there's some little lines to kind of show where the wood has weathered and cracked in response to the bolts. Make sure you've got a sharp pencil for this. Now on the other side here where we've got this um, smashed break in the wood, you also want to put in some nice little jagged edges, keeping in mind that it's going to be splintered so you can do some little splintery bits. And just follow where the edge of your pencil mark was. And from here, you also want to put in some cracks. And finally the wood grain. Now it might be a bit difficult to see your pencil marks underneath but you should be able to just lightly see them. If not, um, the other thing you can do is look at how the pastel was laid down and see how you've got some natural shapes in the pastel. Follow those in soft, just soft lines going down. A bit broken. And again, when you hit the edge, just widen it a little bit, make it a little bit darker. So it looks like that's where the wood's dried and split over time. And you need a couple of lines just next to one another. There you go. And you've got this lovely wood grain look. Same here, just add a little bit on this side. You know, some, some little collections of two or three lines together and some where there's an area where there's no lines at all. And not too dark, just more dark where it's actually split, but the wood grain itself keep it fairly light. Okay, now what to do with the knots? We'll move over from this area. Now it's a bit hard to see, but I've actually drawn a knot in here. Um, it's like, a, think of the shape of an eye, which is sort of like elongated at the ends and then slowly getting rounder in the centre. Have a look around the house at wood grain to get an idea of what eyes look like. Now I like to, with the eyes, I like to follow the texture of the wood by making little flicks. You should just represent the different cells and the way it's structured in the wood. You don't want to go too dark. I'm pressing a little bit too much there. There we go. You don't want to go too dark get longer at the ends and then shorter at the sides like that and you want your concentric circles so I think it needs another one in there like that there you go and then the outside we'll just continue following the path that you laid down before with your pastels and your um, pencil marks just draw in with a few little dibs and dabs your wood grain. Again, you don't want too much. You want to keep it nice and light, not heavy at all. And 
here we are coming to the edge here. So once again, we'll darken the border between the two um, pieces of wood, a bit of shadow, break into the middle and draw your jagged piece of wood where it's been blasted out. Again, making those little oops, splits in the wood. So, so you think it's this is just where the bit of artistry comes into it you just look at it every so often get up stand back from the picture think okay what does it need what's it's missing and um, just go with it this wood drawing the wood grain will take a little bit of practice but you can see the basic principle here and you don't have to be a great artist to do it and as I said wood grain is forgiving and somewhere in the world there will be wood that resembles what you draw you can use this for anything you know you own pictures you can use it in other different um, uh, coloring pictures as well if you want wood grain or you want to make like a wall or something look like it's made of wood or even if you're doing one of those forest pictures you can use the wood grain to um, uh, do tree trunks if they're big enough okay now I'm going to finish this off as a speed drawing now that you've got the idea and you can see how it turns out
think I'm finished with that now. I'm happy with the result. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It gives me a lot of encouragement to keep going with these tutorials. Um, if you're enjoying my stuff, keep an eye out for my other videos and come visit me over at my blog spot at um, www.laartestino.com It's my husband being crazy outside the door there, sorry, he's distracting me. I'll make him pay because he has to edit this video. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, please think about um, making a small donation to my Patreon account. Um, it will certainly keep me in art supplies and producing these videos. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I keep an eye out for future videos. And if you want any particular tutorials, don't forget to mention them below. Also, if you use this technique, um, I would love to see what you come up with. So send me a link in the comments as well to any pictures that you've posted uh, with the wood grain using my tutorial. Okay, uh, I think that's it for me today. I hope you enjoy your hours colouring and I will see you next time. Happy colouring! Thank you.